Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba, and welcome once again to the ATH Materia Medica series. Before I get started, I want to give a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed to and who follow this channel. Please believe me, your support is greatly appreciated. I always welcome your comments, and I'll continue to do my best to answer your questions. So thank you very much. Today I'll be talking about the Materia Medica of Calcarea Carbonica, a homeopathic medicine made from calcium carbonate. I find it absolutely fascinating how some of the most dependable and powerful homeopathic remedies are derived from some surprisingly mundane substances found in nature. Calc carb is derived from the scrapings of the soft white inner layer of an oyster shell. Who but us homeopaths would think that such remarkable healing power could be produced from such a benign substance? Of course, the secret lies in the potentization and proving processes whereby seemingly inert substances are transformed into powerful healing energies, which are then studied in a systematic manner in order to discover their healing applications. The thousands of symptoms, both psychological and physical, capable of being produced by a given substance and therefore capable of being cured by that same substance in homeopathic potency are painstakingly documented and preserved in the homeopathic materia medica. In this way, we can study the materia medica of any given homeopathic medicine in order to learn about its therapeutic uses. So without further ado, let's talk about the materia medica of Calcarea carbonica. Okay, so as previously noted, calc carb is a remedy made from the oyster shell. It is a constitutional remedy that fits people who are often identifiable by their appearance and by their body type. In my experience, this is true of calc types more than any other type. Now, appearances alone never justify the prescription of a remedy, but they can be excellent clues in many calc carb cases. Most people are aware of the classification system that divides body types into three main categories, with ectomorphs on one end of the spectrum, mesomorphs in the middle, and endomorphs at the other end. Ectomorphs tend to be tall and thin. They are the basketball players and fashion models of the world. Mesomorphs have medium builds. They're more compact, like baseball players. Endomorphs are more heavy set. They're the opposite of long and lean. They are soft and flabby. Although most calc carb types are endomorphs, they're usually found on the spectrum between endomorphs and mesomorphs. Calc carb types are usually fair skinned with thicker bodies that have little muscular definition. Calc types have slow metabolisms and consequently they can gain weight easily and have a hard time losing weight. As a result, they can tend toward obesity. They perspire easily, especially on the upper half of the body and particularly on the head. Calc types tend to lack physical and mental stamina and may fatigue easily. Calc carb is the most commonly indicated constitutional remedy for infants and toddlers. Like the adult, calc children are similarly soft and plump with round heads. A keynote clue is that calc carb kids can sweat on the head while sleeping at night. Now let's talk about the calc carb mental picture. Calc is slow, calm, steady, and methodical. They usually describe themselves as easygoing and they definitely are. They're reliable, responsible, and dependable. And they are solid, grounded, and practical. They're work-oriented, but surprisingly can tend toward workaholism. However, they are workaholics in a slow, plodding way, not in a frantic or hurried manner. They are persistent and stubborn, but in a calm, determined way. They set their sights on a single task, think it out carefully, and then proceed step by step to work on it patiently and persistently until the job is eventually completed. 
Calc does not want to be distracted by other matters. He is not a multitasker. He wants to finish the first task before he moves on to another one. If given too many things to juggle all at once, he can become overwhelmed. You may recall that frustration is the buzzword that makes us think of Ignatia. Well, overwhelmed is the word that should remind us of Calc Carb. Calc becomes easily overwhelmed when there is too much on his plate. For example, Calc types can become paralyzed when tasked with cleaning out and organizing the garage stacked with boxes full of old and unwanted toys, tools, newspapers, and other assorted items. He stares at the mess, struggles to see the big picture, becomes confused as to where to begin, and gives up on the project before he even gets started. He would prefer, prefer instead to take one box at a time, narrowly focus on its contents, and slowly sort it all out before he can even begin to think about any other box in the garage. Calc Carb is practical and analytical in the sense that he is the type who will sit down with the alarm clock, take it apart, and then put it back together again. Then he does the same thing all over again with the sole purpose of learning how the clock ticks, pun intended. And he will do it quietly and patiently without becoming frustrated, even if he runs into a snag. Many calc types will say that they love to help others. But unlike Natcha Muir, for example, who helps others by being a good listener, Calc prefers to lend a hand in practical ways. So she helps cook the meal for the big party, or helps a friend move into her new apartment, or drives another friend to his doctor's appointment. In this sense, Calc is practical, responsible, and dependable, and they thrive on helping others. They are natural-born caregivers. But when taken to an extreme, such persons can easily become codependent, at which point they may lose their sense of purpose if they don't have someone else to take care of. Now, Cal Carb is also prone to anxiety, and the best way for him to manage his anxiety is with his mind. It's in this sense that Calc is control-oriented. He tries to understand the problem before him in a practical way, just like he understands that alarm clock that he took apart as a kid. He wants to know all of the whens, wheres, hows, and whys of the situation. Calc patients may ask many questions about their health problems. Why is this happening? What is causing it? How can it be treated? Underlying all those questions is an anxiety that represents a fear of losing control. Calc seeks to quell the anxiety by asking questions in order to gain a sense of understanding and rational control over the problem. Sometimes this is a good tip-off in the consulting room. The Calc patient patiently cooperates with the interview, answering many questions, but just when the session is concluding, he may barrage the practitioner with many questions. It soon becomes clear that providing answers to those questions only lead to more questions. Here we get a glimpse into the calc carb mind, which seeks to understand a problem in order to stave off anxiety. The same calc carb analytical tendency can sometimes make it difficult for the practitioner to conduct an interview. Instead of giving direct answers to questions about his symptoms, the calc carb patient may respond by giving long, elaborate answers that include his own and his other doctor's theories about why his symptoms are occurring. Similarly, during follow-up visits, the calc patient may report improvements, but then also include a variety of explanations as to why he experienced improvement, thus making it quite difficult for the practitioner to discern whether the remedy is really helping or not. You can see how confusing it can be when a patient who took calc carb reports back that his headaches are better, but then proceeds to explain that it could be because he's eating fewer carbohydrates, or it could be because he's sleeping better, or it could be because he's increased his dosage of vitamin D. 
Calcareotypes are likely to exhibit a variety of fears, anxieties, and worries. They may lie in bed at night worrying about their loved ones, about business matters, and about their responsibilities. They lie sleepless, ruminating about the various tasks awaiting them the following day. Since Calc Carb counts on his rational faculties to manage his worries and anxieties, it's quite understandable when we find out that one of his biggest fears is to lose the ability to use his mind. Although Calc is listed in repertories under fear of insanity, I believe that the more accurate rubric is fear of losing his reason. Many Calc patients express this more directly as a fear of dementia or a fear of developing Alzheimer's disease. It's not so much a fear of going crazy as it is a fear of losing the ability to think clearly and rationally. When he does experience confusion or a momentary lapse in memory, Calc becomes inordinately concerned that others will notice this deficiency. Calcarb is the most prominent remedy listed under the rubric delusion imagines others will observe his confusion. A related calcarb fear is the fear of losing one's independence. This applies both physically and mentally. Calc fears losing the ability to think and the ability to get around on his own. More than death itself, he dreads the thought of being confined to a wheelchair or having to live in a nursing home. He wants to maintain the ability to live independently without needing the help of others. For this reason, he fears any disease that, in his mind, could lead him to him having to depend upon the assistance of others in order to be able to perform his activities of daily living. Calc Carb is prone to a variety of additional fears. They include fear of heights, fear of insects, fear of dogs, fear of rodents, claustrophobia, fear of the dark, fear of flying, fear of cancer, fear of infectious diseases, fear of poverty, and fear of losing control. Although that's quite a lengthy list, bear in mind that most people who need CalCarb will only exhibit a few of these fears. Now, CalCarb children are similarly calm, easygoing, and good-natured. They're ideal babies, and they're easy to take care of. However, they can be persistent and even strong-willed, but in a calm way. They're not going to throw tantrums like tuberculinum. Calcarb toddlers may have nightmares. When they reach a certain age, they may, may begin to ask questions about God and about death. Here we see the beginnings of that need to understand things in order to cope with anxiety. Calc children can be developmentally slow. They may be slow learning to crawl and late learning to walk. In fact, slowness is a theme that runs throughout most of Calc Carb's symptomatology. In most cases, they do develop just fine. They simply do it slowly, according to their own timetable. The development of speech may be slow, and the teeth may come in late. The metabolism tends to be slow. Growth spurts and developmental milestones may take time, and even learning can be slow. One could say that slowness is the very essence of CalCarb itself. Children learn to read slowly. They take longer to finish their exams. It's not that they can't learn. It's just that they take longer than others to absorb and assimilate information and to perform physical tasks. The good news is that a timely dose of CalCarb can assist the child whose growth is delayed or who is struggling to keep up in school. Now, in terms of generals, calcarea tends to be more chilly than warm, and calc is bothered by cold weather, especially cold, damp weather. Calc perspires easily, especially on the head and upper body. They may complain of cold, clammy hands or feet. Some calcs wear socks to bed, take them off after a while, and then stick them out from the covers when the feet feel warm. Some calcs prefer to sleep on the left side. 
Calc Carb's food desires can be quite useful as clues. Firstly, there's the famous desire for eggs. Many will admit to eating eggs several times per week, if not daily. But don't be fooled by those who have given up eating eggs due to the bad rap they get from the medical establishment. And some may forget to mention their love of eggs simply because it's an everyday staple of their diet. Always be sure to dig deep enough. It's important to ask questions until you're sure that you have an accurate answer. Calc types also love starchy foods like pasta, but especially potatoes. They look forward to a hearty meal of meat and potatoes for dinner. And they love starchy sweets for dessert like cakes, pies, and donuts. Most also have a hard time resisting ice cream. When I first learned about homeopathy back in osteopathic medical school, I watched my mentor treat a lot of farmers who lived in the Iowa countryside. Many responded very favorably to calc carb, and they often had similar dietary preferences. I like to think of it as the farm diet. When you think of calc carb, Think eggs for breakfast, meat and potatoes for dinner, and ice cream for dessert. As far as food aversions, calc, like Natramur, has a notorious aversion to slimy foods. Sometimes that specifically means oysters, but I've found that this can vary because slimy is in the eye of the beholder. You'd be surprised how many calc carbs refer to their food aversions by using the specific word slimy. Another interesting food clue is that calc, like alumina, can crave odd things like clay, pencils, or charcoal. Some repertories list this under desires indigestibles, while others call them inedibles. Conventional medicine calls this symptom pica. It's a condition common among children, but it can also occur in adults too. I once saw a woman who couldn't control her craving for chalk. She ate sticks of chalk by the boxful. Calp carb quickly eliminated this problem. Now let's talk about the calc carb physical symptoms. Of course, since calc is a broad constitutional polycrest, it covers a wide range of physical health problems. So I'll only mention some of the more common ones here. First, Calc can be prone to catching frequent colds and other respiratory infections, like coughs, ear infections, and bronchitis. Similarly, calc is prone to a wide range of arthritic or rheumatic conditions. The main modality in such cases is aggravation from cold or cold damp weather. Calc carb is often constipated, but it sometimes presents in a unique way. There is constipation, but without urging to go, and surprisingly, this does not seem to cause any physical discomfort. This is worded rather awkwardly in repertories under mind cheerful with constipation. Calc may complain of calf and or foot cramps that act up while in bed at night. Vertigo is another problem that calc is susceptible to. The specific modalities can help differentiate calc from other vertigo remedies. The modalities include aggravation from motion of the head, worse turning the head quickly, and worse ascending stairs. Another keynote symptom is that calc may experience vertigo in high places. For example, while standing at a precipice or looking out from a tall building, Another common calc complaint is shortness of breath and fatigue that occur especially while ascending stairs or walking uphill, but also from exertion in general. In such cases, a workup usually reveals no obvious medical cause for these symptoms. Calc is also prone to swollen glands, uterine fibroids, and thyroid conditions. Recall the calc theme of slowness. Many calcs have slow metabolisms, and a common cause for this can be hypothyroidism. Now let's finish off with a brief list of the most important calc carb modalities. 
Cal can be aggravated from cold damp, from cold air, and even by a draft of air. There's aggravation from physical exertion in general, but especially while ascending stairs. And there can also be aggravation from mental exertion. And finally, as far as remedy relationships, calc is complementary to lycopodium, belladonna, rust tox, and sulfur. Calc carb acute ailments often respond especially well to belladonna and rust tox, but also to hepar sulf and pulsatilla. When considering calc carb, it's important to compare it to other similar remedies. These include antimonium crude, barita carb, calc phos, capsicum, dulcamara, ferrum, graphites, hepar sulf, cali carb, pulsatilla, and silica. Well, there you have it, a crash course on Calcarea carbonica, one of the most important constitutional remedies in the homeopathic materia medica. Please don't forget to subscribe, and I hope you'll tune in again to the next episode of All Things Homeopathy.